Hi and welcome to another tutorial. In today's lesson, we'll learn how to recreate this cool looking text highlighter effect using Adobe After Effects. So anyways, guys, let's jump in. So the first thing that we have here is we have to create a new composition, 1920 by 1080 pixels at around about 10 seconds in duration. Once we've got that, what we need to do is we need to import our assets, which will include the sound effect, the paper texture, as well as the book you are going to highlight. So once all of our assets are imported, what we need to do is we need to drag the book to the timeline. And all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna scale this up a little bit. I'm gonna hold shift to make sure that it fits the entire page. Then what we need to do is we need to drag the paper texture to our timeline and then I'm just going to change the mode to multiply. Now if you don't see the mode, you can always hit this button down here. Once we've done that, then we need to drag the sound effect as well to the timeline. So once we've got that, I'm going to make sure that I create a new solid and I'm going to call this solid, I'll call it the highlighter effect or just leave it like that. I'm just going to make sure that the color is yellow. I'm going to press OK. I'm going to move this at the top of all of my layers. So once I've got that, then I need to look for an effect called stroke and I'm going to apply it to that yellow solid. Once we've got that, then what we need to do is I'm just going to take off that eye, the visibility for now because we don't really need it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the, the sentences that I'm going to highlight. So I'm going to press on the pen tool and I'm going to click here firstly. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to move a third into that sentence. I'm going to click and hold to give it a kind of curve. Now the reason why we give it a small curve is because have you, if you've ever tried to highlight something on a page, you'll never get it you know, completely accurate. So this just kind of sells the effect a little bit more. Once you've finished all that, then you can click on the selection tool, click off to deselect it, and then press G on your keyboard to bring up the pen tool again and to repeat that process again. So all you have to do is just make sure that you, can, you repeat that process again. So I'm gonna press V on my keyboard for the selection tool, click off and then press G to bring up the pen tool again and then redo the last sentence as well. So V to deselect and then uh, G to bring up the pen tool again. And I'm just gonna stop it there. Now we can move all these points uh, later if you really like. So now once we've got that, then what we need to do is we need to come over here into our mask settings. We need to select all masks and then what we need to do is I'm just going to bring the eye back on and I'm just going to change this reveal original image. Now you can't really see what's going on there, but if you increase the brush size, you can see exactly what's happening. So I'm just going to bring it up to probably about, let's go maybe to 20. And if you need to change any of these points because they're not covering enough of the writing, then you can go and you can change it however you like. So once we've done that, I'm just gonna bring up the hardness to about 100 as well. And then what I need to do is I'm just going to change the mode to multiply. So now once I've got that, then you can see that highlight effect really coming into play. So now what we need to do is we need to animate this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to duplicate this uh, sound effect four times because we've got four lines here. So I'm just gonna move it over and I'm gonna hold shift so it snaps to the edge of the previous layer. And so now if I just um, press L twice, I can see that it brings up the waveform. So what I'm gonna do over here is I'm gonna go back to my yellow solid and I'm gonna click on the stopwatch on end. So I'm gonna bring that down to zero. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move forward to the end of where that sound stops. And then I'm going to increase it to just that first line. So you don't want it spilling over the second line. So I'm gonna bring this back down to, let's say 28. And so now if you preview that, you've got the sound effect as the animation is going. So now we're gonna do that for the next layers. So double click L twice to open up where the sound uh, waveform is. And then we're gonna go back to our yellow solid. And what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna press U on my keyboard to bring up my keyframes. And then what I'm gonna do is, I'm just going to copy that final keyframe and paste it there, which will be my starting point. Then I'm gonna go to the end of that sound effect and I'm gonna repeat the process again. So I'm gonna make sure that it goes 
just to that line. And then I'm going to speed run the final two. So now once you've got to the end of your uh, animation, you can see that we've got the lines and the sound working together. Now if you don't like any of the settings here, for example in the first one, it doesn't quite go fast enough. All you need to do is just move the keyframes accordingly and that looks a little bit better. The other thing that we can do is we can highlight all those keyframes and then press Easy Ease or press F9 on your keyboard to have a little bit of a smoother animation. So now once we've got all that with the sound effects and it's all looking good, what we need to do is we need to highlight all of these layers, right, right click and then go to pre-compose. And we're going to add the final cherry to this uh, little animation here. So now that we've added all of our layers to our pre-composition, what we need to do is we need to add a camera. So we're going to right click and add a camera in there. Just going to press OK. We need to make sure that, that our pre-composition is a 3D layer by clicking this icon over here. If you don't see it, you can always toggle switches. Now once we've got that, I'm just going to change the views to two views so we can kind of see what we're doing in 3D space. So this is a top-down view of what the camera is actually looking at. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the transform settings and I'm going to click the stopwatch on these two items over here and then I'm going to cycle through these three icons over here. So I can press C on my keyboard to pull them up and basically the first one is an orbit. All right, so you can see what's happening with the camera over there. The second one is we're actually moving the entire camera. And the third one is moving or that push forward, that dolly effect. So what we're going to do is we're just going to kind of line up our text on our screen and we're going to try and put it in the middle. And I'm just going to, you know, like tilt it to the side a little bit. So I'm just going to maybe move into there a little bit like that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the end of my timeline and I'm going to move it the other way slightly. So now I'm also going to have it zooming in as well. And I'm just going to bring that and try to center it as best as I can. And this is all creating the keyframes uh, in here as well. So now you can see if I scrub through that, it starts off over here and then it kind of moves around until you get to that final resting point which is over there. And I think that's looking pretty good. So the final thing that we're going to do is we're just going to add a depth of field to make it even pop even more. So what we need to do is we need to come down to our camera options and we need to make sure that we turn this depth of field on. Now, nothing really happens here because we need to worry about our aperture. So if I bring this up, all right, you can see that it's getting all kind of blurry. And so what you need to do is you need to find out where you want the focal distance to be. So what we want to do is we want to look at this uh, view over here and we want to try and match up where the focal distance will be. So if I put it close to that line over there, then we can actually start to see the text in here. So you're going to have to play around with some of these settings to, to get them right. And if you want to see what your thing is actually doing, you can always go to depth of field, turn it on and see what it actually looks like. So now I'm happy with that depth of field. So when I take it off, you can see that it's just very slight. And on this side, you can see that it um, is getting a little bit blurry. And then what we can also do is we can uh, animate that as well. So when we get to the other side, you can see that the text over here is also a bit blurry. So what we need to do is I'm just going to bring down that focal point just so that I can see it and I'll maybe bring down some of that aperture just so I can clearly see the text a little bit more. And then once you're happy with that, you can scrub through and you can see if the text is blurry in any, in any way, shape or form during that whole process. And if it's not, then that's it. So anyways, guys, that is a quick short tutorial on how to do a highlight effect in Adobe After Effects. Anyways guys, I hope you learned something. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.